I'm trying to find a Burger King, but according to Google Maps, there are no Burger Kings in the whole of Australia. Uh, Burger King? Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. We do have lots of amazing things in Australia, like kookaburras and kangaroos, the opera house, and we are known for lots of dangerous creatures like snakes and sharks and funnel web spiders. This one was in my kitchen a few years ago. It bites its victims repeatedly and causes death within 15 minutes. But if you do decide to brave all that and come here, you will not find a Burger King. In fact, there was a long battle between the US and Australia over Burger King. To understand why it was such a big fight, we need to go back to the beginning. Burger King started in the US in 1954, and by the 60s there were hundreds of stores across America, and it was bought out by the flour company Pillsbury. And then, from there, it spread all across the world. Encore meilleur que nos meilleurs burgers. Mm, burger King. Пробуй сибирский кинг, а часть прибыли пойдет на восстановление лесов Сибири. Только в Бургер Кинг. Сода. und würzigen Grana Padano Stückchen. Beste Zutaten ohne Geschmacksverstärker und Konservierungsstoffe für perfekten King Genuss. Anatarashi Yakuyoke o Spicy Yakuyoke wa ba Yakuyoke wa Burger King de. But when they wanted to come to Australia, they discovered a big problem. An American man called Don Durbin had moved to Australia many years before and found we had no fast food restaurants. So he started his own drive through and also discovered the name Burger King had not been trademarked here. So he trademarked Burger King and called his restaurants that. By the time Burger King made it out here, Don already had 17 drive-in stores. But not to be deterred, Burger King bought the 17 stores, but they couldn't pay him enough to convince him to sell the trademark, so they couldn't use the name Burger King. About the same time that Don moved here, a Canadian called Jack Cowan also moved to Australia and noticed the lack of fast food restaurants. So he borrowed money from friends and family over in Canada and started a KFC franchise here in Australia. A few years later was when Burger King wanted to come and because Jack had experience, they offered for him to be their master franchisee and spread Burger King throughout Australia. But obviously not being able to use the name, they gave him a list of other trademarks that Pillsbury already had and let him take his pick. Given that his name was Jack, he chose Hungry Jack, which is the brand on Pillsbury's pancakes, pancake sauces, and biscuits, or we would call them scones. Hungry Jack biscuits are what big taste is all about. Hungry Jack biscuits are the big tasting biscuits. Hungry Jack biscuits are the big tasting biscuits. And if you think that's the end of the story, it's just the beginning. Let's take a break to thank today's sponsor, Love and Pies. I've been playing this game for a few weeks now and it's got a good balance between story and gameplay. 
for the story part of it, you are following along with Amelia, who is trying to rescue her mum's cafe, which had been burnt down. So you need to rebuild all of the parts of the cafe. And as you go along to do that, you get to choose how you want to decorate it. They'll give you a choice of three different styles, so you can try out each one and choose the one that you like the best. To progress to new parts in the story, you need to go into the kitchen. And in the kitchen, you merge food and drinks together to make the items that the customers sitting up the top order. There are regularly new in-game events and themes with different decorations and rewards. The latest theme is a cozy fall theme. And there's even a pie festival in the town square that you can get involved in. Click on the link below to download Love and Pies and join in the fall season. It's free to download on both iOS and Android. Now back to Burger King. By 1990, Jack Cowan was doing great. He'd opened 30 Hungry Jack stores across Australia and was the biggest franchisee outside of the US. It was time for his master franchise agreement to be renegotiated with Burger King. And they made a few changes. They added in a development agreement, which said he had to open four new stores every year across three particular states. And Burger King had to approve each of those stores. Could I get a Whopper, please? Meeting the development agreement was super easy. Business was booming in Australia and seeing the profits, Burger King wanted in on the action. They offered to buy Jack out or at least buy a majority share, but he didn't want to sell. So things got a little tense. Fast forward a couple of years after that and the original trademark problem resolved. Don Durbin retired and he let the trademark lapse. So Burger King snapped it up. Burger King then started opening Burger King restaurants in Australia at Shell service stations in direct competition with Jack, their own franchisee. And unfortunately for them, Hungry Jack's continued to do really well, better than the Burger King restaurants. So then they put more pressure on. Remember that they had to approve new Hungry Jack's restaurants? Well, apparently they, whenever a Hungry Jack's came up for renewal, said that they had to do expensive renovations if they wanted to get their renewal through, which meant that quite a few of them had to close down. And as far as new restaurants, Jack was told he couldn't give new interested franchisees any documentation about becoming a Hungry Jack's franchise because the documentation was out of date. But they didn't give him any up-to-date documentation, which effectively put a freeze on any new restaurants opening by third-party franchisees. Now, if you also remember in that development agreement, Jack had to open four new restaurants every year and he wasn't able to do that. So he was in breach of that agreement and they wanted to terminate his contract. Now, Jack reckoned if they hadn't have blocked him, he could have opened 14 new restaurants every year. So he took them to court. It was a long and expensive court case. Jack had already spent $8 million on it, and he estimated that Burger King had spent between 50 and 100 million. So he was getting worried because if he lost the court case and had to pay all of their legal fees, that's a lot of money. And we all know that Burger King likes to win. A very important message from Burger King. Winning isn't everything, but it sure is fun. Aren't you hungry for after a long time looking at all the evidence, the judge made a decision and Jack won the court case. He was awarded $70 million in damages. Fast forward to today and he is 81 years old. He has an estimated net worth of $2.1 billion, not just from Hungry Jack's, but other amazing business deals that he did over his time. And he still goes into the office every single day. When I came to Australia, I had great admiration for, for you know, being starting from scratch for those that also did that. Private companies building every dollar, you know, goes back into the business. How do we expand and grow? I also have respect for those that, it's kind of the opposite somewhat of the analogy of those that are building a business, but they do it for, without great reward financially. And as I say, the school teachers in life, those people donate their life for others. They do it without kind of a, a system of reward. They do it for the rest of the world and, and to try and make this a better place to live. So I also have respect for them as, as, as people that, that I've got to know and, and have influenced my life. What a legend. Also, 
These are legends, these are my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you would like more videos like this, make sure you hit the like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff that tells the algorithm that you liked this sort of video. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.